Hey everybody, Mr. Stewart here at Math We've Got This. And in the last video, we were looking at simplifying this algebraic expression using exponent laws. So let's carry on with that. <clears throat> okay, so one of our first moves here in line one was simply to re-represent each of those terms. I do have to say though, that when you write a power that appears to have no exponent, it really is the base to the first power. Okay, so it's often helpful to write that superscript or to write the one there as the exponent. Now let's focus at the, on the denominator. Notice that we have a complete power. It's composed of multiple terms, all being multiplied together, so it's a product. And we also have an exponent indicating that we have a power. So this is referred to as a power of a power. And inside the parentheses, we have the product of some powers. What I'd like to do in this video is to take a little bit of a longer journey towards the answer, okay? Because sometimes going that route really conveys or helps us to develop a deeper understanding. So let's break up, <clears throat> let's choose the right, the right marker. Let's do that first. All right, so let's take the base. So that's 4 multiplied by u multiplied by v to the power of 2. Now notice that we're going to do that twice, okay, because of the power. So let's repeat that. Okay, that's the definition of power, right? You take the base and multiply it by the number of times indicated by your exponent. Now also while we're at it, remember that there's no exponent. It is a 1. Now what we'll do is we're going to do a little rearranging. So we're going to apply the commutative property. So let's do that here. I'm going to indicate kind of what our next move is. And remember, under that, sorry, the tablet's getting out of control here. Let's erase that. And we'll try it again. So just remember that with the commutative property, the order in which you multiply values, it doesn't matter you will still end up with the same value or the same expression, simplified. So in the numerator, why don't we join up or group together by multiplication, the coefficients or those multipliers. Then we'll keep the u terms together. We'll keep the v terms together. And we'll divide that by, let's group the coefficients together, so the fours keep the u's together, and the same with the v's. Now, what's really, really helpful here, what's quite beneficial, actually, is notice that <clears throat> we have the multiplication rule for powers with the same base. So we can add these exponents together. Same thing over here. Multiplication, you have powers that are the same base. We can multiply those powers by adding the exponents. And same thing happens in the denominator. So let's do that. So negative 2 multiplied by 8 is uh, negative 16. And that would be multiplied by u to the 1 plus 3. And multiplied by v to the 3 plus 2. Divided by 16. Multiplied by u to the 1 plus 1. And multiplied that by v to the 2 plus 2. So we're getting close to our finale. So let's deal with a little more simplification here. So I'm going to keep the 16s as they are. We'll deal with those after. And we're going to add those exponents. So u to the 4 in the denominator, u to the power of 2, v to the 5th power in the numerator, and v to the 4th power in the denominator. All right, next up, let's simplify. So have a look at the factors we have. So if you take these coefficients, for example, what you're going to end up with is negative 1 over 1, which is very convenient. Here, we're going to use the quotient rule, and there's our notification. The video is going to be ending soon. We'll use the division rule to simplify. So in our final step, in our final few seconds, so negative 1 multiplied by u to the 4 minus 2 multiplied by v to the 5 minus 4 and you always subtract in the order in which you get a positive exponent. So negative u squared multiplied by v to the 